Belarusian Video Center presents an Igor Bishnev film. Every living creature has a way, a path of its own. For some it is very short, others have to run along it for hundreds and even thousands of kilometers. An endless multitude of invisible paths stretches across our forests and wetlands, cuts through our meadows, fields, rivers and lakes. And all these paths inevitably overlap sometimes in a most unexpected and amazing way. It was not until three days after this moose had been killed by wolves that bears discovered its carcass. Nevertheless, without much hesitation, they claimed their right to the remnants. than the wolf, people say. And yet, even the wolf does not feel at ease when there are bears inside. It is inferior to bears in strength and tries to avoid them. The bear, on the other hand, feels no particular reverie for wolves. Given a chance, it will challenge them and take their prey. The bears ate parts of their find right away and buried what was left to save it for the near future. The wolf could only swear and curse, in wolfish of course, partly howl, partly bark. the little party, whose pleasure they owned entirely to the wolves and their hunting skills, the bears immediately started marking the territory. This is the way of the wild. Every creature has to leave its mark on the path, declaring vividly to the world, I am alive and well, and I am ready for any challenge. Grey Jacket Grey Master, Grey Brigand, simply the Grey One. We have more than a hundred names for this animal. In the past, people were afraid as much as to mention the wolf, because of the widespread belief that the one who speaks its name will soon have to encounter it. Well, no one was very eager to ask for troubles. The wolf is now long past its golden age. People like to chit-chat about wolves, and show interest to their way of life. Yet there used to be much more grounds for that in the old days, when wolf was the scourge of the human race. When was it? A hundred years ago, or two hundred? Man always punished wolves most severely for their evil deeds. Yet now, no longer suffering from hunger or cold, we began to reflect upon our own actions. Researchers are increasingly attracted by the wolf as a very interesting species that plays an important role in retaining the natural balance. Certainly we can't speak for the entire humanity, but some of those who happen to know more about wolves can't but feel respect and sympathy for this animal. Even hunters now recognize the wolf's right to live. This is a wolf's lair. Just like people, wolves live in pairs and families. A pair lives together for many years, often their whole lives. 
wolves only abandon their lair once it has been discovered by man. Professional zoologists say that wolves never hunt in the vicinity of their lairs. And it's true, when hunting grounds lie within 10 kilometers of the den, the risk of it being discovered by intruders is much less pronounced. Unlike the bear, wolves are 100% predators and can't do without meat. Yet one interesting point to make is that in areas populated by wolves, their victims grow in numbers by the year. In fact, there is no contradiction here. This is but a classic example found in ecological signs. Just like lions and leopards in Africa, tigers in Asia and cougars in America, wolves actually assist in the well-being of the species they hunt. The predators help natural selection by eliminating ill, weak or maimed animals, letting the strong and healthy flourish. The population is thus kept in balance with the resources of the inhabited area. It is a natural harmony where both wolves and their prey have a chance to thrive. Wolf cubs grow quickly together. Interestingly enough, at the age of two to four months, they become highly aggressive. Even when playing with each other at the den, they show much hostility. And when it comes to carve up of the meat, they fight till the winner is obvious. No compromise here. age of four months, cubs turn friendlier towards each other. Twenty days old and until fully grown animals, wolves play a lot to learn their basic hunting skills. For already in July-August, the young wolves will start hunting for lesser prey close to their lair. Throughout the first months after the cubs are born, the male wolf is the principal breadwinner of the family, the female never leaving the puppies. Later, she joins in the hunting too. After all, the cubs need more and more meat with every day. This is why a resting wolf is a rare sight. Isn't he really just like a dog? In the morning, the autumn rhyme lingers longer in the marshes than anywhere else. The air here is more humid and also cooler. This is most noticeable if you look at the dragonfly's wings. And yet they are alive, only paralyzed by the night's cold chill. This wolf was lucky from the very start. He found a carcass of a gray heron killed a week ago by a golden eagle. As it turns out, birds can well supply their four-footed cousins with food, not only vice versa. Wolves have a roving life. They travel many, sometimes hundreds of kilometers, and then return back home. These animals are experts at where and whom to hunt. Two or three wolves will easily overcome a moose. They have no mercy for either boars, roes, or hares. Yet, in dire necessity, the wolf will eat anything. See now how this one feeds on a fish. As a popular saying has it, the wolf lives by its legs, and it's perfectly true. But when it comes to no animal is more terrifying than the wolf, well, we are not too sure about that. 
We didn't think the wolf was so frightful. It is strong, clever and beautiful. Yes, a predator, you say? Well, predators have the right to live too. Look, it is dashing full pelt away. Must have smelled someone. Who is it? Try and guess. Someone more frightful than the wolf. Shamovich, his dog and his wolf. Dmitry lives and works in the extreme north of Belarus at the Krasny Boar Reserve. Dima's wolf is called Boy. Two years ago, Dmitry bought a month old wolf cub from hunters and soon found himself in the role of a parent and a master. Boy now lives next to men and dogs. He is still more like a dog than a wild animal. For two years now, Dina's greyhound, Alta, helped to look after the wolf, was a kind of nanny, if you like. Truth be told, by now, Boy has far outgrown his minder. This is not the first wolf Dmitry has known. And he is sure every wolf has its own face, expression, habits, and character. Boy is brave and obedient. This wolf can be playful and cunning, tireless and willful, but only towards the master. Boy takes little notice of other people. It was not through Boy's fault that he and Dima became the only family and pack he ever knew. Clearly, boy will only be able to live in a reserve, for his relocation to a more densely populated area will mean additional difficulties. Often, humans cannot easily forgive others' devotion, courage, and being free. They have to have revenge. With animals, the latter commonly takes the form of a shot in the back. Having said goodbye to Dima on the forest edge, Boy decides to take his everyday walk. As the saying has it, give a wolf the best of food, still he would hanker after the wood. And indeed, there is something to hanker after. A female wolf appeared in the forest, and she is clearly attracted to Boy. Look how beautiful she is. Wait a minute, there's a surprise. One more female, this one without a tail. The boy obviously enjoys popularity among the local ladies. Yet, when Dima appears in the forest, Boy does not hesitate and dashes to meet the master, or the ladies. No, it's Dima he's after. Whereas the females don't seem too eager to face the man. After all, Dima hasn't wasted all that good food. Boy accepts men, while obviously hankering after the forest, 
Surprisingly, the tailless female is not a That is why in the next few days she'll have better chances of winning boys' attention. February is the time for wolves to marry. Winter is the hardest of seasons for animals. It is also the time when usually invisible animal paths become quite apparent due to the snow. And the deeper the latter, the more difficult life is for the wild creatures. In winter, wolves live in packs. A pack is the same as a family, only larger. It includes 10 to 12 animals, a leading male, a female, and a number of cubs. Being in a pack makes hunting easier. Researchers point out wolves' is superior intellect. This animal is among the leaders in this respect. A wild wolf uses his intellectual capacities first and foremost to find food. The latter, by the way, is highly varied. This boar has had a very difficult day on his path, but managed to escape death. In February, the temperature may reach 30 degrees Celsius below zero. How do animals survive such frosts? Such weather is especially hard on the smallest of them. A mere couple of minutes in the open air mean an almost certain death. Well, there's only one thing they can do. Hide under the snowy sheets. This is the answer for murine rodents. The walls, however, have a very different goal in mind, to try and find the mouse even under the snow. The wolf is a predator, and yet when he's up against it, he can eat anything, including voles and other rodents, especially if mice are numerous that particular year. Wolves living farther south raid and pillage melon plantations to quench their thirst. Apart from that, they eat berries, windfall apples and even mushrooms. Boy is not hungry, and today's mouse hunt is just a play, a mere game which is hardly true for the mouse that certainly is in much less playful mood. For animals, any kind of play is also an exercise. Well, that's it. The two animals have parted once again to follow their separate paths. Humans have devised many ways of hunting for wolves, from killing the cubs right in the lair to massive helicopter and plane raids, yet the most widespread is still the flag hunt. During the day, wolves usually rest. The hunters use this time to fence in the area with flags, in a circle of about 2 to 2.5 kilometers. Three to four persons with rifles form a line within the circle, leaving spaces of about 50 meters between each other. The hunters stand downwind for the wolves not to be able to smell them. With the riflemen in place, the beaters commence the hunt. 
Shouting is not recommended. It is enough just to speak in a normal voice and tap the three trunks from time to time with wooden sticks. The wolves leave the bed and run where to. They try to lose the beaters and hurry towards the hunters ahead. These endless attempts at whipping the wolf out have been going on for centuries. For centuries, every winter men with rifles spend the endless red flagged wire, and the hunt goes on. Today it is boy and the two female wolves that were caught in the circle of flags. The beaters have already started on their menacing deadly route. The wolves have no choice. They have to overcome the primeval instinctive fear of these little pieces of red cloth, fluttering in the wind and reeking of smoke, dogs and men. Beyond the flags lies freedom. Here, inside the circle, there's only death. But what about boy? Boy backs up in the snow. He's shaking hysterically, but still dares not as much as approach the flags. Why? Whether due to his individuality or because of having lived for so long near men. Male wolves are the first to die. After all, females are much more important from reproductive point of view. And boy finally makes his choice. He runs towards men, not the flags.
You might have guessed by now that this was not a real hunt. We just wanted to film wolves' behavior under stress. It was a kind of game. And the very same evening it began to snow quite heavily. It took only a few minutes for the wolf pass to be completely whelmed. We delighted in the unusual game of men and wolves and thought of the future of spring, of a new family for wolves, and how we will show their life. Little did we know that boy would never again appear on film. A week later, Dima rang us up and said the two visiting hunters apparently decided to have some fun and shot three wolves dead, boy and the two females. The next summer came, and with it, the usual cares for birds. Time to feed the chicks. Well, it seems a nanny would be in order again. For whom? For these three cute little wolf cubs, Lord, Sarah, and Daya. The cubs came to Dmitri from Berezinsky Reserve. A male and two females. Nobody needed them in the reserve. They don't have enough room for the pair they already have. There weren't too many options. It was either put the cubs to sleep or try and raise them beside men. and Dmitri made his choice. To become once more a father and a mother to the wolf cubs and turn into an adult wolf and a leader of the future pack. Does Dima really need all this? Babies, dummies, goat milk, vitamin supplements, runny noses. Well, at least there's no need for diapers. We don't know whether Dmitri would have taken the risk of trying to raise wolves that no one except him seems to need. After all, these cubs were born to die. Yet, a very important event had occurred, which, in our opinion, had a crucial influence in this story. Quite recently, Dima himself became a father. So, by the time the wolves were born, he's a zoologist as well. It seems they are going to need more than just one nanny.
for wolves, howl is the same as language for humans. Wolves use it to communicate within a family, express various emotions and convey information. The leader of the pack has to lead the conversation too, but this poses no major problem. Dimitri has mastered the art of wolf song a long time ago. When walking with the growing wolves, he often speaks to them. And not in a human language, of course, but in wolfish. Always hoping for a response. And his hope to be understood is well grounded. It was no accident that the wolf was among the first animals to be domesticated. This happened over 10,000 years ago. Those were the ancestors of all of today's dogs. Millennia of civilization have passed and the dog became man's best friend. But the wolf has always remained our rival, and humans have a very specific attitude towards rivals. As of today, wolves are extinct in 11 European countries and are on the verge of extinction in most of others. Unfortunately, too late did we discover the vital role played by wolves in our parts. It is an amazing picture, isn't it? Walls, dogs and men all walking through the woods as one pack. They walk together, following the same path. A fairy tale, a work of fiction, an exception to all our rules. That is exactly the point. Those are our rules, human rules. It is our rules that make man the only important being on the planet. A being that somehow has the exclusive right to decide upon life and death of other creatures, upon the existence of forests, wetlands and lakes, the right to satisfy its all too important needs by sacrificing the rest of nature. It would seem that the life of each and every being, even the most beautiful or useful one, depends solely on human whim. Not to mention the fate of wolves. And yet, every evening, a remarkable foursome walks a scarcely visible path across the sea of meadow flowers, a man and three young wolves. Somewhere in the middle of the path, they pause to sing, yet once again a song in the wolfish tongue. For, as it turned out, it is this tongue that they understand best. And then, the walk continues. They will go on along this path across the endless meadows and under the skies of unfathomable blue, with the moon always following them. For this once, it seems, men and animals have found a path they can walk together. <laughs> 